Hey everybody, and welcome to the third episode of the Wandering in Darkness podcast. Today we're just going to be going through this um, iceberg of the Egyptian god Satesh or Set or Seth that I made. Um, if you're not familiar with an iceberg, it's basically just a list of theories and ideas relating to the concept in question. And the further down you go, the more obscure and outlandish the ideas kind of get. And here we're going to more be going with obscure than outlandish. Everything here is an actual theory. Just some is more known than others. And in the description of the video, I'll list all my resources so people can follow up on this as well. I also wrote a paper on it called Redeeming the Egyptian God of Darkness, which is also a section in my book, Wandering in Darkness. So you can read in more detail if you're interested and get sources from there as well as the description of this video. And for the purposes of this, I'm just going to try to be really vague. I don't want this to last a long time. I just kind of want to put the ideas out there and let people research them from themselves. So starting with the top and most known obvious things, uh, Satesh was originally the equal to Horus, also known as Heru, to the Egyptians. They were kind of seen as two sides of the same coin. One wasn't good or in the other evil, and one wasn't more powerful than the other. And, um, you know, they worked together to help the dead individual ascend to the imperishable stars so their soul could exist eternally. And that really only changed with the coming of Osiris was the big thing in the fifth dynasty. Some say fourth, some say fifth. Where uh, Horus was made to the child of Osiris and enemy of Satesh. That came later. Animals sacred to Set, there were a lot. Pigs, donkeys, hippos, sometimes crocodiles. A lot of people think that the set animal is an anteater or perhaps a donkey or some sort of dog. But in reality, the set animal is actually a fabricated animal. So there's no equivalent to it in the real world. This means that when people are trying to kind of find the real set animal, so to speak, it's like they're trying to find an actual dragon or an actual griffin. This wasn't something that actually existed. It's a fabricated creature and that kind of tied into sets nature as a weird outsider. Hyksos refers to the rulers of the kind of between the Middle Kingdom and the New Kingdom, which was the second intermediate period. They were Asiatics who came in from the north and ruled northern Egypt from the city of Avaris, and they held Set very dear. He was one of their main gods and they associated him with their own storm god Baal. Son of Newt, uh, Newt was the star goddess. She represented the starry night sky. And um, she has a lot of children in most common myths, especially Osiris myth. But originally, the term son of Newt was meant specifically for Satesh. There's a bunch of different ways that we can interpret this, which we're not going to get into for this. This is just kind of listing these facts out. But son of Newt most often referred to Satesh and no other god, even when she had other sons, such as Osiris. The wall scepter is simply a staff held by kings and gods alike. It represented the power and dominion of Satesh, and it was based off his forked tail and his fabricated animal head. And then 18th to 20th dynasty, the last thing for the top here. This just refers to the fact that starting with Horemheb and the end of the 18th dynasty, and then especially the 19th dynasty with Seti and Ramses, uh, Satesh was very highly honored. It was probably the most flourishing time for his worship. And we'll talk about this a little more too as we go through the rest of the pyramid or iceberg. Getting into slightly more obscure stuff here, Satesh was associated with the Big Dipper. We've pretty much confirmed this. It's one of the only constellations we're certain that the Egyptians had and one of the only ones that matched our own exactly, most likely because the Big Dipper is an asterism, not just a constellation, so it's very easy to pick out of the sky, even compared to constellations. I mean, just compare like our Big Dipper to Draco and see how much harder it is to make out Draco in the night sky. And this meant that Satesh was associated with the imperishable nature of those stars, so immortality and eternal life and power and stabilizing the cycles of the cosmos themselves. Peribson refers to a second dynasty pharaoh who took the name Seth Peribson. Uh, usually people took a Horus name at that point and put Horus on top of their Sarek, but he took a Satesh name. 
there used to be a lot of debate if he was monotheist or a heretic or something like that. But from the most recent I've been able to found, find, it seems like he actually led a kind of a prosperous time and might have reunited Egypt from some struggles it was going through in the early dynastic period. Baal, Astarte, and Anat. I mentioned Baal before. The Hyksos worshipped him and equated him with Satesh. And he was also given the foreign wives of Starte and Anat. These, I would say, are the most famous of his consorts, maybe only next to Nephthys. And they tied to the fact that, you know, Set Satesh was something outside of the rest of the Egyptian gods, and he was related to things foreign to Egypt rather than native things. Temples of Set refers to the fact that there were temples dedicated to Set specifically in ancient Egypt. Uh, we know there were some at least at Nupt, which I probably just butchered the pronunciation of, but that's fine. And we know that Tutmos III restored that temple as well. We also know that Ramses built a temple for Satesh at Montmar. He actually destroyed... Ramses II, sorry, he actually destroyed a temple to the Aten and replaced it with one of Satesh, which I personally find really interesting. So this is just referring to the fact that the temples of Set were real. They're not just a fiction. Bull equals Ka, one of Set's main animals, was the bull. This was what he was associated with most when in his role as the Big Dipper because it was seen as a bull's leg. And bull equals Ka just means the Ka was kind of the divine spark of the Egyptian soul. And these words were the same, comment bowl and comment the part of the soul, which just is an interesting way that connects Satesh with the Ka, meaning the divine spark. And if you read the pyramid text, there's some parts, I believe, that actually reference this, where it kind of talks about like Satesh as a Ka. And so it's that double play, you know, this part of the soul and the animal that he's represented with in the North sky. Which means I'll jump over to pyramid text here. It's in the same section. It's just, is that in the pyramid text compared to the coffin text and especially the book of coming forth by day Satesh had a lot more positive roles uh, i've done some work before trying to pull some of those verses from the pyramid text and kind of dive into them in some more detail but this is an aspect that's been ignored until very recently for the most part especially in the more esoteric sides like i don't know why esotericism refuses to catch up with academia it's not very becoming of us in my opinion but yes the pyramid text gives us some of the best insight that we have into the original satesh and his benevolent late nature and being a psychopomp and being associated with uh, deification and all that stuff relationship to thoth just refers to the fact that satesh was sometimes seen as one of his parents um horus trick set into consuming his semen and then that rose to satesh's head in the form of a lunar disk and became Thoth. There's also a lot of stories where, and a lot of theorizing, especially that Thoth sided with Satesh in the Osiris conflict, that he wanted Satesh to be king rather than Horus. And even that he may have possibly convinced Satesh to kill Osiris, which is something we'll get into a bit later. Ash refers to an early deity that was also worshiped by Peribsen. Uh, he looks exactly the same as Satesh. He was associated with the Western deserts and the oases and all that, just like Satesh. And so some people think he might have been the original version and the two melded together or something like that. My personal theory would be that they just were the same god and things were still kind of getting figured out with names and all that and identity. And Ash was probably specifically the desert oasis aspect of Satesh, whereas he was more of a national god at the time for his gnomes and ending this kind of second round here we have pi ramsey which is the city that ramsey's the second built serge sonneron who was the director of the french institute for oriental archaeology in cairo I theorized that ramsey's actually retired there to worship satesh in private kind of, and the cities were based around gods related to him, such as Asarte, and one of the sections was for Satesh himself as well. And another section was for Amun, who we will see was tied to Set in one of the later sections of the iceberg. So Pyramses is just on here, 
not because it's obscure that Ramsey's belt or anything, but that the purpose of it was to honor Satesh, his patron deity, rather than focus on a moon or the other gods that he'd been focusing on for the rest of his life. Moving into the middle section here, we have Chaos Conf. This is a German word, I believe. It is a term for the myth of a hero fighting a beast of chaos, usually a serpent. So knights versus dragons, or Yahweh versus Leviathan, or Perun versus Velas. These would be examples of Chaos Conf myths. And it seems that the oldest version of one of these myths, if it's not Tiamat, then it would be Satesh versus Apep. Uh, with him as the hero role, role, which is really only controversial because people tend to ignore that he originally was the hero rather than the chaos being fought against as he was in later times. And so when most people think of Chaos Conf in Egypt, they'll probably think of something like Horus versus Set. And even in later Egyptian times, Set was associated with Apep rather than his enemy. So I put this on here just because I think people miss that aspect of Satesh's role in the history of Chaos Confirmus myth. Western occultism just refers to the fact that Set has kind of played the role of the devil for a lot of Western the Western esoteric tradition. And that one could honestly probably be lower in its own video. I mean, there's a huge history between Satesh and the Western esoteric tradition, but just just throwing out there that he's pulled, played a very important and I'd say controversial role in some of those traditions. Magic Wands refers to how in the Middle Kingdom period, priests who were involved with healing and protection and childbirth would carry wands with them that often depicted fabricated animals. Sometimes these were related to Satesh, such as bulls, and sometimes it was actually the Satesh animal himself. He was often seen on these wands and tied to that type of protective healing magic, which a lot of people probably do not know. The next one on here, this refers to the tool used in the opening of the mouse ceremony. It was, well, a tool used in the opening of the mouse cer ceremony, but one of the most important ones. It allowed the dead to, you know, eat, breathe, speak, and all that in the afterlife, which was absolutely crucial as Egyptian history went on. It was shaped after the Big Dipper, which of course was Satesh's constellation, and sometimes it was made from materials sacred to him, such as meteoric iron. Greek magical papyri refers to the fact that Satesh appears there, usually in the negative as Typhon, but sometimes in the positive. Uh, Don Webb especially has done a lot of work investigating that in his Seven Faces of Darkness. The idea of Satesh being the initiator of Osiris is one that's been debated and talked about for a while now. To groups dedicated to Satesh, it's pretty safe to say he wouldn't have been seen as negative, as a murdering monster. And instead it can be seen that he is actually the reason that Osiris even became God of the Afterlife and he's the strength that Horus had to test himself to become king. So in this role, he's redeemed from his more murderous negative roles and rather becomes a necessary evil for both deification and kingship. And finally for this section, original afterlife, this has been discussed already a little bit. This is talking about how the dead became an imperishable star rather than going to a world similar to our world or becoming one with Osiris or anything like that. They became a god themselves. And a lot of people will say that this was reserved only for the royalty, but I also feel the need to point out that the royalty and the higher class just had more resources to record things. The fact that we only have records of deification and kings only implies that they were the ones able to keep records, not that this wasn't some idea that existed in Egypt as a whole. I don't think we can discount that at this time. Nearing the bottom here, we have the red crown. Generally, the white crown is seen as being upper southern Egypt in Satesh, while the red crown is seen as being northern lower Egypt in Horus. But it's been theorized by several authors that originally both came from the south and both were associated with Satesh, which I personally think makes a lot of sense, especially since Satesh was the one mainly associated with the color red. I put Eye of Horus here not because there's anything obscure about this symbol, but because in the pyramid texts, 
it actually states that Satesh gives the Eye of Horus its power, which is something usually attributed to Thoth. And that's definitely something I don't hear a lot of people talking about or a lot of people realize is that we do have this idea that it's actually Set's magic rather than Horus's or Thoth's that makes the Eye magic and gives it its power. The Seshkef knife. This refers to a tool used to sever the umbis- umbilical cord of newborn babies. It's sometimes called the fishtail lance, and it was another important symbol in the opening of the mouth ceremony. And this is quite possibly where Set's forked tail comes from, as well as the outcast symbol that is used for him in the coffin text. And the reason for this is most likely because Set played a role in severing the serpentine umbilical cord from the waters of chaos into the world, which of course fits with his role as the opponent of Apep. Early burials refers to the burials found by people like Petrie. Before we had mummification or anything like that, we had people being buried in the fetal position on their side very shallow graves, sometimes even with their heads removed and facing the opposite direction. Which is of course very different from uh, the Egyptian burials as we picture them now. And this was tied kind of to those earlier traditions before the more solar ones came into play. By absorbed into Thoth, I mean that Satesh had a lot of positive roles before he was fully demonized after the 20th dynasty and onwards. And as he became more and more of being of pure evil, some of those positive aspects seem to have been given to Thoth instead, including the healing ones, because like we were talking about before, we know Thoth is associated with healing like Hermes, but it was actually Satesh who was on the magical wands related to those acts. And then finally equated with Amun and Ra, in the 19th dynasty, at least. The three often shared temples and were even equated as one and the same. If you look in some of the papers I linked or even the one that I wrote, you'll be able to see like an image of Satesh with Amun in one of these temples and they shared priesthoods and all that. And this is something I hadn't heard mentioned until much more recently with uh, stuff like deconstructing the iconography of Set or a misrepresented god in the Egyptian pantheon by Turner and Taylor, which will be down in the citations, of course. Finally, we have the last most obscure section. And these are mostly here because they're either very contended or I've been able to find very few sources that actually argue the point. So Set the Serpent has been. This is from both Budge and... Wilkinson, I believe, and her Ptolemaic lexicon of the Temple of Edfu, which will be in the description. And this refers to Satesh being seen as this giant serpent being directly tying him with serpent imagery, which will come into play with some of these other last points here. The Shed Shed, which is how I've seen this SD, SD pronounced, this was something that always accompanied the god Webwawet. And I think the most common conclusion for the Shed Shed is that it's some sort of animal den for the canine god that it's always associated with. However, there is another theory that it's actually associated with Satesh and that it represents a meteor, with meteorites being associated with Set due to being from the heavens and from outside and foreign to Earth. Seth Christ refers to Gnosticism, the third son of Adam, Seth, and then Christ in a Gnostic rather than Christian sense. This is a very hotly contested idea that the Egyptian set, sometimes called Seth in Greek, is one and the same with the Gnostic Seth and therefore Christ. I don't know if I believe this one, but I've definitely written about it and tried to argue for it because I think it's very interesting, but it's very much a kind of fringe idea, I would say. 
Osiris as Yam. I've seen this in one source. It's about the Sarte papyrus, which will be in the references. And this just says that with the ball cycle, the myth of Yam or Yam uh, was just a sneaky way for worshippers of Sitesh, Sitesh to kind of talk shit about Osiris with Yam standing in as Osiris without them directly condemning Osiris. Um, as I said, I've only seen this in one source, but if you know anything about me, you can see why I really like it. Spins on Osiris myth. It's just because, as mentioned, worshippers of Satesh probably wouldn't have seen him as evil or demonic. And so there's this idea out there that they'd come up with different stories. So, for instance, they, there's a story where Thoth is actually the one who convinces Satesh to kill Osiris. There's tellings where the killing of Osiris is actually valid because he has stolen Satesh's wife and fathered Anubis with her. And so this this just references those different variations of the myth of Satesh and Osiris that don't jive with the Osiris myth that most people commonly see as like the one truth of Egypt. Nehushtan and Asherah is the idea that Asherah is related to Asarte and Anat and Baal and is therefore another wife of Satesh, the one that's never made clear in the mythology. And that... Satesh and the Nehushtan serpent of the Torah have a lot in common. They're both related to high places. They're both related to trees, sacred trees, all these different things. And it's a connection that is very rarely made from what I've seen so far. Ramsey is the first and study the first priesthood. There's another thing I found in only one or two sources, but it says that the two were priests of Satesh during the reign of Horemheb when Horemheb chose Ramses I to be his successor. And so not only was this family dedicated to Satesh, but they were actually part of the high priesthood for the god. And finally, sky religion refers to the theories of people like G.A. Wainwright that there's a much more ancient tradition dating back much farther than the dawn of Egyptian history as we know it, where Satesh was worshipped not in a monotheistic way, but almost as one of the highest, most important gods with the king being associated with Satesh. And that this tradition was just completely different. I mean, it was a worship of the stars over the sun. It had cremation instead of burial. And I highly recommend the book, The Sky Religion in Egypt, Its Antiquity and Effects by G.A. Wainwright. That is one of the best books you will ever read in your entire life. And yeah, that's just a very, a very brief introduction to this, to some of the different theories and facts related to Satesh that a lot of people might not know. And if you have a rightful skepticism, because some of these are pretty strange and definitely not in keeping with mainstream ideas, then I highly, highly recommend you check out the other sources. You should never, ever take anything just from me. Look at the sources. Otherwise, for now, I think that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and uh, I will see you next time whenever that happens.